everyone, welcome to a new video. Today's video is especially for international students or applicants who are interested uh, to apply or to um, become biomedical scientists in the UK. Last week, I explained how UK-based students or applicants can navigate the IBMS and the HCPC systems. But if you are coming from outside the UK, the path can look very different. In this video, I'll walk you through the key steps, tips, and potential challenges to help you feel confident about your journey. So let's go hi everyone welcome to a new video um today's video is finally as i promised you that i'm going to explain about the biomedical science or becoming a biomedical scientist if you are an international student i did uh, touch on that in previous videos in the old videos so check them out i always have a playlist at the bottom so you can navigate the topics that interest you so have a look at them um and I've been answering them according to the questions that I get from you guys um, uh, on my question and answer or Q&A. Uh, get used to it. Question and answers is acronym to Q&A. Um, and I did say to you guys that I will be looking at that. So thank you for engaging. Um, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Aida Noor. I'm a biomedical scientist self-employed biomedical scientist and i share everything about me being a scientist exploring the world that includes the my career journey and i've had the longest journey to become a biomedical scientist i'm a uk registered biomedical scientist so if you're wondering uh, why am i speaking specifically in the uk so i can tell you all about it so the international applicants are based on the research and your questions and from international biomedical scientists who I worked with um, and I've been researching and finding out about them. So the first thing I want you to appreciate the key difference for you as an international student or an international applicant. There are four things that I want you to appreciate. The education, the visa requirements, the culture and the recognition. So let's break that down. Your education, the qualifications may vary depending on your country and the institution where you got your uh, degrees from, assuming that you've got masters maybe or degrees or other certifications. The visa requirements, whether you're a student visa uh, is essential for your enrollment or your visa as a, uh, as a, as a worker or potential worker. The culture, um, adjusting to the UK lifestyle um, acad and you know academic uh, expectations i want to elaborate on that point um, because there's something i've learned recently about that and um, recognition uk qualifica qualifications may require equivalency um, assessments which we're going to touch on that in the future but also uh, later on in this video so um i want to touch on the culture because um i i think this is a bit challenging for some people um especially work-wise. I want you to appreciate work-wise. Um, this is something I discovered when I started exploring and traveling. If you explore my channel, you can see that I've traveled specifically uh, in Dubai and UAE and also, but in terms of laboratories, I did um, check um, in the UAE. Um, the li um, and also healthcare systems as a patient or a visitor or something. The let me, I, I specialize in microbiology or medical uh, microbiology or infection sciences. So automation is not, um, it's, it, we routinely use automation. I was very fortunate enough to work in, uh, in a fully automated uh, lab ever since I started working. So I didn't realize that microbiology, they still use manual work uh, in, in that other side of the world. And uh, we still use, uh, um, uh, we still use uh, manual work. But that's one thing I've noticed. The level of technology is quite different. So if you be joining us in the UK, be prepared. Technology, it's, it's, it's quite high in the UK and it's gonna get higher now. Um, the lifestyle as well, the work pace is very fast paced. So you have to be quick, uh, a fast learner, and you're, you're, it's, it's faster. I don't wanna scare you, but it's faster because when I, travel and visit and I see how <laughs> how people are working I'm like this is so relaxed for my liking but I, I just bear that in mind that there is a difference in the work there is the difference in work culture so I'm not scaring you but bear that in mind and I remember there was an international a biomedical scientist who joined uh, the trust where I was working I asked him how did you prepare yourself and he said he was you know he knew he knew everything he did very well 
And he said, um, I said to him, how did you prepare to apply? Um, it's very competitive. He said, I, I made sure that my skills were matching the lab and I did the research. So he was already prepared. So this is the advice I would give you. Be aware of the culture, ask around, research, find out. And I'll, I'm, I, share, I share my thoughts and my experience as well to facilitate that. So these are the differences that I want you to um, take away and bear in mind. So why is it different for international graduates or students or applicants? Degrees might not be IBMS accredited. Last week, uh, I explained the IBMS and the HCPC and the importance of the IBMS to accredit your degree. Uh, you might need extra steps in order um, to achieve the um, equivalence um, uh, that you need. Uh, UK standards might uh, require formal uh, evaluation, you know, the equivalency test, uh, NARIC and things like that. So you need to be aware of these things. Is your degree accredited? Do you need extra steps to um, ensure that you're um, equivalent? Um, do you need evaluation, UK evaluation to meet the standards? So these are the things that I want you to bear in mind in order, you know, to achieve um, what you need uh, to join us in the UK. So that leads me to, um, let's elaborate more about the IBMS registration equivalence process. You submit your transcript and syllabi. Uh, the IBMS will review your documents. It will give you a feedback or certificate of competence. Uh, the last one is that you're very lucky because that means you don't have to go through the extra stuff. You might need to complete um, additional modules um, in order to achieve um, the equivalency. Make sure that all your transcripts and syllabus are signed by the university. So if you're at the beginning, make sure that you collect as you go along and make sure that it's all stamped and signed by the university um, because that will allow you to, you know, to submit it uh, when you're ready to apply for the IBMS, you'll be able to submit your documents and then you'll be able to get the feedback um, whether additional work or you're good to go and you're competent. I, last week I explained the process of the IBMS, so have a look at that. Um, just uh, at least you have an idea, UK, non-UK, but we're going to have a look at the application in, in the future. Um, I did touch upon that in uh, one of my old videos where I went through the website and I explained where you need to look at the form and all of that. So check that video. If I find the link, I will, but it's in one of the playlists that I always have in the comments uh, uh, section. So um, that leads me to elaborate more. What are the documents that you might need in order um, to submit for equivalence? Um, use it as a checklist. You need all your academic transcripts, collect them as you go along and make sure that they are stamped. Uh, also the module description and everything, they, they, they're going to assess everything. So collect all your documents. Uh, if you've worked, also have work experience. And if you need to translate, uh, if, you're not, uh, if it's not all in English, you, you prioritize translation. And I always remember this uh, lovely um, friend of mine who I uh, trained with. We both qualified in the same place and uh, quite a similar year. Um, she had it all in Spanish and she was doing the top-up modules, she was doing the portfolio and she was traveling back and forth from London to uh, Sp Spain to translate all her work. Truly, I found that very admirable, that the way she persevered and she kept doing all of that and she achieved and she got qualified as a biomedical scientist. So I was very pleased, but I, find, I found her journey very inspirational that she just kept going and went for it while she was in the UK. So um, it's, it is possible, it's worth the hard work. Um, so that leads me to the next part. Um, the, once the IBMS is happy with everything and you've got the congratulations, you've got the, the certificate of competence from the IBMS, the, it does give you a certificate. Oh my God, it's stamped and everything. It's like a proper certificate. So once you have that, you're good to go to register with the HCPC and become a qualified or registered uh, UK registered by medical scientist. Um, so you will need that number one, the certificate of competence. You need proof of identity, a character reference. That's very important. Uh, your English equivalence test. If you if it's not gained in the UK, IELTS or e, uh, OET language test. Um, and then you can start the HCPC uh, application process. So there's UK and there's international. You will be the international. So I did explain that in a previous video, but we're going to revisit it with an updated uh, version. 
So again, just to remind you, you need the IBMS accreditation certificate, proof of identity, character reference, your English equivalency tests, uh, and the HCPC process. You can start with that and uh, get started. Um, the proof of English language, there are two types. I'm not going to lie, one of them was fairly new. So you've got the IELTS, which everybody knows uh, and we're familiar with. Um, the OET, um, uh, these are two. So the IELTS, you need to have a, an overall score of 7, a minimum 6.5. Um, OET, you need uh, grade B on all sections. Um, I didn't know the last one existed, by the way, uh, but apparently it's a, um, it's a medical, um, for medical professionals. So um, if you need any more information, let me know, guys. But this is something new. When I was doing my research, I was like, wow, okay. So um, make sure that is out of the way as well. So you don't have to deal with the stress of the exams and, and you know, uh, going through it. Nobody likes exams anyway. So... These are the tips I would share with you guys if you're an international student or international applicant. Contact the IBMS as early as possible to know where you stand. Um, you might need to budget for training. Um, and join the IBMS as, as an international member. That, that has loads of benefits. Um, if you're interested in applying for the NHS, um, research the uh, visa options because at least you, you know. The advantage of contacting the IBMS because you will know from the start if your degree needs accreditation, if you need to do top of modules, if your experience, uh, uh, if you need experience, and budget for training. Bear in mind, sometimes you might need to volunteer. Um, don't underestimate the importance of volunteering. We all had to volunteer when we are doing our career. I had to volunteer as well. So don't uh, don't you know hesitate in order to gain um, experience as soon as possible because lab experience is extremely important, especially in the UK. But at least if you're from your home country, you can gain experience and try and gain you know, the overall experience because you want to impress in order to move to the UK. Um, and join the IBMS International um, you know, as an international because that will be a way for you to network in your home country. So don't just focus in your regional uh, um, uh, networking this is a great way to uh, network globally I, I see loads of amazing stuff on linkedin so don't you know don't just stay in your cocoon network so in terms of visa um you don't always have to work for the nhs you've got the private labs so um for example if you apply um there are different private labs i've worked in private by the way i started my career as a as a, a medical laboratory assistant in the private and then qualified um, as, a, as a biomedical scientist in the NHS. And then uh, I started my uh, first biomedical scientist in the private. And then now I work as a, as a freelance or self-employed or locum in different NHS, uh, you know, where, where I'm at the moment, a different NHS. But if there's a private opportunity, I will take it depending on the contract. So. Don't limit yourself just to the NHS. Yes, it gives you amazing packs. I'm with, and there's a video where I, sh I compared my experience between NHS and the private. It's a comprehensive um, uh, video, so check that out. Um, and I share from my own experience. I'm very lucky that I've exp experienced both. So don't limit yourself to NHS and private. It might be easier for you to get into the private and then move into the NHS. So that way you can start your career early. And maybe in terms of visa, they're more flexible. I'm not sure, but um, don't limit yourself. There are different ways where you can apply for um, uh, biomedical science roles, um, whether supporting MLAs or BMSs. So that leads me to um, what common mistakes that you need to avoid. Don't assume that your degree uh, is automatically recognized. That's one of the biggest mistakes. Do your research and find out and be proactive about it. Starting too late, that's a mistake. Skipping the English test requirements. Not reading the HCPC standards. In the previous video, we spoke about that. So do your research on where your degree or degrees or you know your education credentials are how recognized they are. That's why it's very important to contact the IBMS as soon as possible. Uh, and that way you avoid starting late, at least you're ahead of the game. So wherever you are, just get started. But the earlier you start, the better. But if it's too late, don't worry, but start where you are. 
And don't underestimate the importance of English test language. Um, the IELTS, I've heard it's difficult. I didn't do it because I, I, I did my degree in the UK, but I've heard it's difficult. So um, work on that as early as possible to get that out of the way and at least you've got that. I'm not sure about the validity of the, the, the test um, comment in the question in the, um, in the comments below, let me know. And um, be aware of the HCPC standards. Um, there are different standards. Just be aware of them uh, and read them. Um, the previous video, I spoke about the IBMS, the HCPC. Um, some of them are applicable to you guys. So um, um, what I'm covering in this video is the differences, uh, the difference between uh, the international and the, um, the home student. But uh, the HCPC, the IBMS, uh, their roles are exactly the same. But in terms of application, for you, it's going to be um, a bit different. So just bear that in mind. And we're going to elaborate more. What I want you to take away from this is like a starter. You go and do your homework and then we'll talk further. So um, this, uh, it's all about active learning, not passively passing you the information because that way you're not going to learn. Uh, or some things are learning by doing. I had to do it learning by doing. So um, that's why I'm sharing all of that. So I hope this gave you clarity on how to approach biomedical science registration as an international student or international applicant. Yes, it's a process, but with the right step, it's absolutely achievable. I've seen so many people who internationally applied, like I said, uh, my colleague who has, she's done fantastically well and she, she excelled and uh, we actually ended up working together in the same trust next to each other actually. So if you're watching this video, hi. Uh, and it was very nice because we were, you know, reminiscing on how far we've gone. So um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment below and I will keep answering your questions. This is not about me talking to you. This is about me walking with you uh, through this transformational journey. Um, and I always have Q&A uh, uh, videos regularly where I put all your questions. So keep, keep the engagement going, keep the conversation going. Um, and in the future, we're going to look deeper into uh, the HCPC and uh, and how you can prepare and all of that. It's 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 a process, but we are I'm here to break it down for you guys. So if you found this helpful, make sure you share, like, and comment and subscribe because, um, like I said, there's some amazing content that I'm really excited. I'm, I'm actually excited when I'm putting it all together, and I'm I'm you know I'm I'm hoping it will benefit as many of you out there because. It is an exciting career, but you have to put in the work and uh, we are going to look into um, what's the future. Uh, I've just shared a video recently about the future of work, uh, touched on as a biomedical science as a, and also um, in the future of work, you know, the landscape. But also we're going to have a look at the future of biomedical science and more exciting topics and more... Uh, more is coming so uh, this is my second year on YouTube. Um, thank you guys for be commenting and keeping... and. and uh, making this community grow because uh, this is the whole point of uh, creating this community or this channel. So until the next video, as I always say, keep shining, keep inspiring and see you next time. Ah, okay. I hope this helped people because I was like, Ooh, I'm not international, but The gra what is that? What do they say? Um, there's always light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm at that end of that tunnel. But actually, no, I'm in the middle as well because this whole thing it's a it's a journey. Anyway, there's always hope, and I always follow these two sayings: it's never too late, and it's better be it's better to be late it's better to be late than never. So yeah. Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, today's video is slow down. I get so excited. Um, I'm still learning the best focus, so I'm gonna remember what that is. <laughs> when I publish the video, I'll know if this is the best corner. Anyway, so let's get started. Oh, I thought this is not correctly done. Oh, sorry, the video is not this way. <laughs> I was thinking, why is this? Yeah, there's always, you always find a mistake when you're recording, but the show goes on. This is this is about being real and raw. Anyway, so going back to that point, um, there are two options that you can uh, work. This is still bothering me.